Welcome to a special edition of Tennis Spin. I'm gonna take you down my tennis racket memory lane, all right? So I was actually clearing out some stuff at home and I looked, I found a bunch of my old rackets. So I, I'm gonna take you down how I started, where I started, what rackets I used and see if you're interested in all this stuff because you know i was shocked that's so i thought i'd share it with you um, maybe it brings back some of your memories um, as to rackets now before i start this old bag check here uh, just to give you a little background uh, my tennis career started when i was six years old all right i didn't know any of the players i just saw tennis on my black and white television don't remember the names, don't remember anything, just remember people hitting with a wooden racket. So I said, I said to my father, I was like, I wanna play tennis, right? So we went to Walgreens, not Woolworth, Walgreens, right? And I didn't know about rackets, I just grabbed any old racket. Um, when I looked at it, when I knew better, so I played with it, you know, at six years old, seven years old, eight years old, mess with it, you know, just messing around. When I was old enough to realize what it was, I looked at the racket and it said, Chris Everett special. So I don't know, I might've gotten a girl's racket, but it was a wooden racket and it had Chris Everett's name on it. So that's where my tennis career started with a Chris Everett special wooden racket from Walgreens. When Walgreens used to sell tennis rackets, right? Wow, is that crazy? That's in like, man, that was in the late 70s. All right, so let's start my bag, my, my old school bag check. Remember these bags? Remember it was so cool to, uh, you know, Sampras and Agassi, those guys carrying it around like this, around their back, you know, using the handles only without the straps. Uh, those are the good old days. All right, so bag check. My first real racket, my first real racket in the 80s, Ultra 2. Look at this little head. Like it says braided graphite, Ultra 2, mid-size. This thing is like a two by four. It weighs a ton. Look at my grip size, four and five eight. Still got the leather grip on there. Is that a fairway? Oh my God, look, it's a fairway. So that's racket number one. Racket number two, Pro Staff Midsize. A la Pistol Pete Sampras. That 85 square inch head. Look at the, the square one. This must be really old because this is not a remake. It says four and a half there. So I went from a five eighths to a half. And I, I, you know, back then it was grip size was, I just grabbed whatever racket and played with it. And I think everybody used halves back then anyway. So we go here. Oh my gosh. This was my favorite racket in history. If you guys even remember this or know of this, this is the, Yamaha Secret 04. Probably the one of the stiffest rackets in history. Also the thinnest racket in history because I busted six of these in, man, it was like probably in a year. These I was breaking these left and right. The, I would hit the 12 o'clock on an overhead and it would just snap on the sides. Uh, they were so fragile. They were like, Man, they were like potato chips. I was just going through these. Um, they also made a, a secret 10, um, a 10-2, and a secret six. Uh, the secret six was the heaviest of them all. It was probably over 12 ounces back in those days. But the four was the stiffest of all. So the most powerful of all. And um, in my opinion, the smoothest of all. Like my backhand um, flowed with this racket. It, it just, you kind of just set it and just forget it and let it go and the racket kind of takes over. So Secret 04, if you guys remember it, man, um, this is the racket. All right, 
after that, it was hammer time. You know, this is my Wilson Hammer 4095. So light overall. So I went to like a 11 and a half ounce racket to a, I think it was a 10 ounce racket, but all the weight was at the head. So, and then they switched to an 1820. And I probably would have liked the 1619 more on this, but um, I like the head heaviness of this racket and the, and the taper beam. So it's wide, 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 and then thins out at the top. Easy power with this one. All right, then I graduated. There was a racket in between these two. Um, it was the Yonex RD Tour, uh, Yonex RD Tour 90. So if I could get a picture of that, I'll, I'll put it right here. But it's a Yonex RD Tour in the 90 square inch head. So it was heavy uh, and really solid. So I went from power to more control at in that phase of my my life. And then after that, um, I graduated from college and uh, came out and started just playing more recreationally. And I started playing with this one. Went back to a hammer. And this is the only racket that I've ever had that's been long. This is a half inch longer racket. It's, it's a hyper hammer stretch 4.4. So this thing clocks in at about less than 10 ounces and this is when i started really experimenting with lead um so i i kind of got addicted to lead um with this racket i kept adding more and more and more um i'll show you here see see all the lead i put like here all around the head i was doubling up in some of these rackets on the sides, you know, putting a strip over a strip. Yeah, I didn't put anything in the handle, but what I did do, um, I usually got these in a quarter or a three eighths. And because I held the racket like that, I had to put a replacement grip um, over it. So it's a thick grip over a thick grip. That definitely rounds us off, but at least I was able to play with it without getting a blister in my palm. So that was just me being creative. Um, and I and I played with this racket for, I want to say 14, 15 years. So um, I cracked these too, but I kept buying them off of eBay for like 50 or 60 bucks and then retuning them up, cleaning them up. And uh, I think I got this one off of eBay. You know. All right, so 4495, half inch longer. And it brings us to almost present day. So after that, the only thing that, you know, I, I, I've tried rackets year after year and I can't find anything. Went through the Pure Drives, went through the Pure Aero Tours. Um, this was one of the few that I could play with just because of the, the head weight. Uh, Burn 100, when this came out, I wanna say six, seven years ago. Um, great feeling racket, naturally already had some head weight. So I even added more to it. So you can see there's weight here, there's weight in the handle, weight at three and, three and nine, and then weight at the top. So use that for probably two and a half years. Then they discontinued that because it didn't make the hundred anymore. Actually, no, I take that back. They changed that. They changed that racket. They added countervail to it. Um, I had to have the orange version of this. So I got a few of these because I just love Halloween, orange and black. So, so this is the countervail version. It took me a while to get adjusted to it because um, it muted the frame. So I, I had to kind of 
find the sweet spot again because I, you know, this, this you feel everything. This, you, you, it's way, way more muted. So, uh, and again, I, I added more lead to this new one. So you see more lead in the throat area. Now I went strips of lead down the side and up top. All right, so at, at the point where I came here, I decided to really go down to a 3 8. So this basically has lead with a shrink wrap, right? And then I, I didn't uh, wrap an extra replacement grip. So making it, you know, kind of more like a 3 8 half, like a true. Whereas on this one, it's more like a 5 8 3 quarters. So. And then now I'm more like, you know, like a three, eight, three eighths half on these with a shrink wrap underneath. And that's a white shrink wrap. So it's one sixteenth, not one eighth. All right. And then that leads me to the modern day uh, Clash Tour, Clash Pro that I use that I, uh, that was after this one. Okay. So. What I'm gonna do is do a quick measurement of these for you. Um, just to weigh balance and swing weight these just to see if there's a commonality in this. So let's get started. All right, at the scale, my Ultra 2 from way back in the day. Let's see how much this thing weighed. Woo! 374, man. Three seven four. Let's swing weight this puppy. Three sixty four. Balance out. About thirty two point three, so three, three, three millimeters on the balance. Man, that was a heavy racket. That's crazy. Let's check out the Pro Staff Mid. Pro Staff Mid, 353.5. That's crazy. All right, let's go. Swing weight. Three three six lighter in the swing weight balance thirty two on the dot so three twenty on the balance point there. My Yamaha. Let's check out the Yamaha. Oh, Jesus. Yamaha weighs a lot. 367.5. No wonder I like the racket. No wonder my backhand was better with it. 343 on the swing weight. Where does it balance out at? Thirty two. So three twenty millimeters. That's crazy. All right, so 
my orders. Hammer 4095. Wow, it's light. 302.5. Swing weight. Let's see, this. I'll bet the swing weight's pretty high on this one. Three forty three. Those swing weights the same as the Yamaha. Hope that it balances out. Oh man, it's off the charts on the balance. Whoa, whoa, man! It's Jesus. It's thirty six on the centimeter thing. So it's like 360, but that's really head heavy. That's probably why I liked it, because it was head heavy. It was light, but it was head heavy. All right, going into my 95.44 here, my 44 Hyper Hammer. That thing clocks in at 311. Swing weight. Three fifty eight. That's where I like it. More head weight. Balance point. Well, that's going to have to be very similar to that four zero. I'll bet. About 35.7. So 35.7, 357. Head heavy. Going into the burns. First generation burn, 100. Overall weight, 338. Swing weight. Three fifty six. See where the balance point is. Ooh. Now this head heavy. Thirty three point five. So three three five millimeters. All right. Final racket. So this countervail. Three fifty two point five. That's pretty heavy. Going in it. Swing weight. Three thirty nine. So it's about 32, 32.3, 32 so 323, all right, so I got my chart here. All right, to sum up my history of rackets, um, it looks like I like heavy rackets. Like I'll, I always say, I like two by fours. Um, I like head heavy rackets too. 
right? And this, this chart or the history of my rackets show that. Um, I mean, I started with a three, 374 gram racket on that Ultra 2 and it's only kind of gotten lighter since then. But um, Yamaha was my probably my favorite racket out of the bunch, and that's 367.5, so uh, with a swing weight of 320. So that's why um, I, I say it's so smooth, because uh, it was great for my backhand. So um, I don't know if you guys can do this, but this, this was actually a fun exercise for me to, to learn, you know, my, my old rackets, my weights, my swing weights, uh, and my balances, because I've never done this before. Um, I know you guys keep asking me for a RA machine or a stiffness frame machine. I'm trying to get one, uh, but it, it I don't know if it exists to sell me right now. Um, I've tried for years. I did used to have a Babylon RDC machine, which measured that, but um, it broke 15 years ago. Uh, I had that thing for probably 20 some years like I got it when it first came out like in 1991 so uh, but you know I'll keep searching I'll keep searching but maybe I can jerry rig something that'll tell me a stiffness of every racket but um, I'm gonna have to take a little time on that one okay but I'm working on it okay I'm working on it all right thanks for watching tennis spin where we put our spin on your tennis